Hello everyone. In this video I'll show you 10 lab tips I've picked up over the years. Hopefully some will be useful to you. Let's get started with tip number one. The first tip is plastic tip I use to coat all my metal tongs and other metal parts I use in the lab. Chemistry tools are expensive, so doing what you can to protect them can extend their life and save you money. You can find this plastic dip in the paint section at Lowe's or Home Depot. It is very simple to apply. Just dip the part you want to cover in it, then remove and let any excess drip off. Afterward, continuously rotate the object for about three to four minutes to keep any drips and runs from forming. Then just hang them up to dry. You can then use a knife to remove the coating from any place you didn't want it. It's inevitable. If you do chemistry long enough, sooner or later you're going to get a glass stopper or a glass joint that is stuck. Using force to separate them is not an option. So here's what you do. Get a heating gun and put it on high and then begin to heat the seized up joint. You don't have to leave it on very long, about 30 seconds will do. Then grab something light you can strike it with without breaking the glass. I use the handle on a pair of scissors to do this. Begin to lightly tap the joint from all sides. The stuck object will usually fall out after a few seconds of tapping. Be sure you do this over a table so when it falls out it's not broken. Glass beakers are expensive. If I can, I like to do messy reactions in something I have not invested a lot of money in. Take an aluminum can and grab a pair of can openers. Use the can openers on the lip of the can and remove the top just as you would a can of soup. Cutting out the top like this leaves no sharp edges for you to cut yourself on. You now have a disposable beaker. You can even boil things in it. The only drawback is that you can't put anything in it that reacts with aluminum. I used a ton of glass rods and found ordering them online was not cheap. I found another source at Hobby Lobby in the glass bead section for $15. These glass rods are for making glass beads, however I found they work just as well as glass rods for chemistry. Also they have a pretty low melting point so you can use a regular propane torch to melt them. I usually go through and melt all the edges on both ends of each rod. So far in all my use of them I have not come across anything that will react with the compounds that give them their color. Okay, real quick. Which of these is a scupula and which is used in jewelry repair? Stumped? This one is a regular scupula costing about two to three dollars. This one is for jewelry repair and was purchased at Hobby Lobby for 50 cents. You can find it in the jewelry making section. This is the poisonous compound mercury 2 sulfate. Since it's in a glass bottle, I like to add some extra insurance in case the bottle is ever broken. This shipping shrink wrap works great for this. Since it's clear, I can see through it to the info on the bottle. If it was ever dropped, it would contain the glass and the compound, saving me from what otherwise could be a dangerous mess. I would love to have an Igor I could yell to flip the power switch to whatever contraption I've invented. However, I can't afford to pay his health insurance cost. So these remote controlled power switches are the next best thing. I have one hooked up to my vacuum pump six feet away and can turn it off and on at the filter. It saves me a lot of time and exercise. I'm pretty sure the people who design these cans designed them so it was impossible not to spill whatever solvent they were holding everywhere when you try to pour them. An easy solution is to use a glass tube like this one and use the straw method. Place the glass tube in the solvent, place your thumb over the open end making an airtight seal, then lift the tube plus solvent out. 
Once the tube is over the desired container, pull your thumb away from the opening. The solution will pour out the other end. No mess, no fuss. Repeat until you have the desired amount. For those who would like to try distilling something but don't want to drop the $300 plus on a distillation setup, I offer you the Can Distiller. Get this can of Best Line Rubber Cement Solvent at Michael's or some other hobby store. This is 100% N-heptane, a very useful nonpolar solvent, so be sure to save it. You'll also need this tube with the flared end I found at the plumbing section at Home Depot. I'm sorry, but I have no idea what it is called, but they had a ton of them so it should not be too difficult to find. Anyway, the flared end fits perfectly in the cap, but it does not fit through the opening in the can, which is perfect. So drill a hole in the cap to allow the tube through. Try to get it as snug as possible so there won't be any leaks. Next. Bend the tube as close to the cap as possible without collapsing the tube. It should look something like this. Now all you need to do is screw the cap on the can and you have a can distiller. Of course you'll need to be careful with what you put in it as acids and such will react with it. Let's go give it a try. All you need to do is set the can on a hot plate and then set a beaker under the tube to collect the distillate. As you can see here, we're starting to get our first drops over. What's that you say? How about a homemade all glass setup? Well, okay. To begin, you'll need one of these glass globe plant watering devices. I paid five bucks at Ross for two. While I unpack them, let me crush your expectations as Nerd Rage is so fond of saying. Without an annealing oven to anneal the glass, we're extremely limited as to what we can do. If you've never messed with melted glass before, then you should expect to go through 10 to 20 of these before you become anywhere close to proficient, and even then there's a good chance that they will shatter on cooling. Luckily these are made from very uniform thin glass, so there's still a good chance that they might make the cool down. Grab one and a torch and do this outside. I don't have enough time in this video to fully explain all the ins and outs of glass blowing. The key thing to understand is that you must keep moving and you must keep every part you heat up hot. More importantly, glass blowing is unforgiving. Mistakes equal third degree burns. Do this at your own risk. Well, one of mine made it, but the other shattered on cooling. You can see it looks the same as any retort. I blew out the back side to allow for for a glass joint I had from a broken condenser. However, any small glass tube will work. We'll be using epoxy putty from the plumbing section at Home Depot to mount the glass joint and the retort. No, we can't melt the two together since they're made from different kinds of glass and would shatter since one would cool faster than the other. Grab enough putty to mount the joint and start kneading it together to activate it. Then mount the joint to the retort being very careful not to apply too much pressure. I know what you're thinking. He said all glass, not glass and epoxy. We'll come back to this later. When it's done, it should look something like this. Now let the epoxy set up, and then we can test it out. After a couple hours, I set mine up for steam distillation. I chose steam because I did not want to shatter it with direct heat. While we wait for the water to boil, let's look into the epoxy. This epoxy is pretty amazing stuff. Here's a beaker with 31% HCl in it. Let's drop in this from the epoxy and see what happens. Nothing. It's non-reactive with HCl. Or at least it's non-reactive at room temperature. So let's up the ante. Here's fuming nitric acid. I'm going to add a small amount of water so we can see the reaction. Now I drop in the epoxy. And nothing. It does not seem to be reactive towards nitric acid either. I saved the best for last. Here's 98% sulfuric acid. I'll put the epoxy in. And now, now we get a reaction. 
So 98% sulfuric acid will react with the epoxy. I didn't have time to try all these reactions again heated, so there's a chance they could react at elevated temperatures. If the epoxy is a major concern, then you do not have to blow out the back for the joint in yours. That would give you an all glass setup. However, you'll have a really hard time loading the retort through the very small stem. Okay, so our water should be boiling now. Let's go see how our retort's doing. Wonderful. Our apparatus is still together and the water is full boil. Let's zoom in and see if we're getting any distillate. And as you can see, we're indeed getting distillate from our makeshift homemade glass retort. I hope you enjoyed these 10 amateur chemistry tips. I have tons more and we'll do another vid sometime in the future. For now, thanks for watching.